in the second part of the project, we'll develop the code so we can jump right into Robot Studio, find our neon ball, be able to kick it around, and reach the goal. We'll take a look at what Code Kingdoms is capable of doing with Roblox Studio, and we'll learn how to drag the code we do in the website into our project in Roblox Studio. You can always find the links for the necessary tools we use for this project in the section down below. Now, for the second part of this tutorial, we're gonna code using Code Kingdoms. So open back your Code Kingdoms account, your Code Kingdoms project, and we're gonna see that we have the ball file over here. We're gonna use three files in total, one for the player, one for the ball, and one for the flag. So the first one we're gonna code is the player one. So type in here, player, select the player option, and click on add. When we click this option over here, it's gonna create a new page for us. Everything we put inside this section is gonna to relate to the player, to the one who's gonna be playing the game. We're gonna create a method. I'm gonna name it make ball. Don't worry if it doesn't show up in the list. We're gonna make our own code, our own method. Type enter, and then you're gonna see that it creates an, a block of code for us to put our code inside. The first thing we need to set up is where the ball is gonna show up. Because if you remember when we tested the project, the ball, we couldn't see it yet. We're now gonna be designing the code so the ball shows up just as we jump into the game. On the left side, go to the white blocks that say Lua language and grab one that says object equals update. Drag it inside of the method. This block allows us to make a variable or any type of object and assign it a value as an initial value. In object, type in ball offset and make sure it's selected into a local variable. Click OK and click on update. Now we're gonna make it a vector three type of data. Vector three indicates a position in three coordinates. The X coordinate for left and right, the Y coordinate for up and down, and the Z coordinate for depth, front and back. We're gonna design this offset to be six, zero, and zero. What this means is that when our player spawns in, we're gonna make the ball be six studs to the left or to the right, depending on your perspective, to where the player spawns. So it doesn't spawn just in his head. It's, it's gonna be spawning a little bit to the right. Okay, next, we're gonna add another one of these blocks, object equals update, because we now need to set the initial position of the ball, the name of this object, we're gonna call it new ball position. Make sure it's in local variable, click OK, and click on update. And now click on vector three, and instead of putting the values right in, we're gonna select the option that says left plus right. This means that we're gonna be operating two different vector three data. The two data that we're gonna operate is the first vector, how, how long is it gonna be separated from the player, and the player's original position. For on the left side of, the, of your bar, uh, search first for position. And you gotta see, there's a position with a little, a little symbol like the justice one, okay? Put it on the left side. This means the player's original position, since we're on the player file, self.position will indicate the player position when it just jumps into the game. For the right position, just click on it on right and select ball offset. This means that the new ball position will be where the player is plus the offset, which is six spaces to the right. We're gonna add another object equals update block. If it's hard for you to find it, you can just type in object over here and it should be the one that appears. In the, in the white color. Put it below our two previous object equals update blocks. And now we're gonna make another ball. 
This one, make sure instead of being a local variable, we're gonna make it a field. When you click on field, more options will appear. And we're gonna go here and click on the ball option. Click okay. You're gonna see a self dot ball in a green color. What this means is we're making a new object of the type of this page over here. So whatever we put in update, it's, it's gonna be the name of the thing that refers to the ball we're just making. Now, to create a new ball, we first need to make a special block for it. Special blocks or blocks that we cannot find normally in the left side are created by building it. So we click here on the option, build a block. I'm gonna search for the block called find start script in singular. Click on it and click on, select the option that says clone. Clone with a position. Place it. Now we're gonna have two options to fill in. The first named class is which object are we making? We're making the ball. So in your type, select the ball option. Where are we putting it? Well, pretty easy. We just signal it here, the new ball position. So in the position, we're gonna click on new ball position over here. And that's it for the make ball method. Complete the player function. We just need to add another method. I already added over here. Just click on that method and select the on join option. When the player joins into the game, we're gonna make an empty ball so the game knows where we have the space to create the ball in. To do that, select another object equals update block, place it over here, and take a look here. In my blocks, or you can just type in ball, you're gonna have a ball with a little tag and a heart. That means we're referring to this ball we already created before. Drag it inside the object, and in update, the next object we're gonna code is the ball object. Click on that method and select on collide. This method will be called when the ball crashes with another object, be the player or the flag. We're gonna check that the ball is gonna be destroyed only when it crashes with the flag. Because if we destroy it when we crash with the player, the game is gonna be over the moment we jump in basically. So to do so, first, we're gonna create another object equals update. Now place it over here. We're gonna make a variable called flag. Okay, local variable. On the right side, we're gonna select find script. Mm -hmm. And this one, we're not gonna just drag it, we're gonna select the object option. So click on the little flag over here, click on the class object one, because we need two parameters. One is what type of object it is, and the second one is what's the class of the object, all right? Now for class, we're gonna need to have our flag. Before we add it in, we need to add the page for the flag. Create a new page over here with a plus sign. Type in flag, object, add. Go back to the ball function. Click on class, select the flag. Here in object, just select other part. This means that we're gonna create an object called flag from the other part that is what the ball cl clashes with. If the ball clashes with the wall, the other part would be a wall. If the ball clashes with the flag, the other part will be the flag. If the ball clashes with the player, the other part will be the player. The last thing we need to code is to check if this object is actually the flag. To do so, click on the search bar and select if. The if block is a conditional statement. A conditional statement checks whether or not the thing inside test is true or not. If it's true, then we'll do the block inside. If it's not true, then we'll not do the blocks that are inside of the if function. 
So what are we checking? We're checking if the flag is an actual flag. Well, it's the flag that we designed it to be here. We're going to build a block here. We're going to select flag, the box with the heart. We're going to place it. Drag it inside of test. Now, why does it have a box and a heart? This one means that it's one of the pages that we have over here. If we select player, it will also have a box and a heart. Now, if the flag is an actual flag, well, if I am colliding with the flag, then I'm going to destroy the ball. There's a block conveniently called destroy. We can dr just drag it inside. So if I touch the flag, the ball is going to be destroyed and the game is going to be over. Next, we're going to synchronize the code with a Roblox Studio so we can test it out and publish it. Now, we're finally ready to test out the result in our Roblox Studio application. One good thing to remember when coding using Code Kingdoms is that the storage of the codes, we have to manage it ourselves. This means that Code Kingdoms grabs our scripts, everything we work in it, puts it on our project, but we have to put it from where it saves it to the specific parts we want the codes to be in. So for example here, if we go on the replicated storage and open Code Kingdoms project, we're going to see our three scripts. These correspond to the ones we can see in Code Kingdoms. The ones we're going to need to change are the ball and the flag. For the ball, we're going to right click it or double click with the two fingers and duplicate it. Now we have two ball scripts. Remember, when we design the game, we put the ball inside server storage. Now we're going to grab one of these and put it inside the ball, which is inside server storage. So if you go to server storage and drag it inside the ball, it's going to create it as a dependency. This means that it's a part, the script is a part of the ball itself. Go that back here to replicated storage and duplicate the flag. Once you duplicate it, drag it around all the way to the workspace inside the flag pole. Once you're finished with that, we can start and test the game. See, we did it. We're in Roblox and the ball spawned next to us. Now, if you excuse me, I'll drag it around until I can show you what happens with the flag pole. And you can just kick it. Take a look. I managed to kick it next to the flagpole. Now the last thing I need to do is to make it touch the flagpole to see if it works. Hmm. Sometimes the ball is very tricky. It moves unpredictably. But I think if I manage to kick it in the right way. Well, I managed to bring the ball to this side. Now we're going to see if I can score it into the flagpole. I'm going to leave it alone. Maybe this is enough speed for it to crash with the flagpole. Hopefully it works. You see? And I won. Once it touched the flagpole, it got destroyed. And I know the code works because I can touch the flagpole and I don't get destroyed. Remember to anchor the flagpole or, or the flag will fall down when you crash it. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this project. If you want to see more of this, click like and subscribe to our channel. Bye bye.